Hi guys, Professor Latimer here, the CC Mom Who Loves Science, and today I'm going to bring you CC Cycle 1, Week 19, Hands-On Science Experiment, which is called Crystals. So for this experiment, you'll find um, the directions for our experiment on page 124 in your Foundations Guide, and it has step-by-step -step of what you'll do for this experiment. <clears throat> for this experiment, you'll need about a third cup of Epsom salts. You'll need um, a container and about half a cup of water, and you'll want to get it warmed up. So I just stuck mine in the microwave, if you have access to a microwave, for like 40 seconds to get it pretty warm. Um, otherwise, you could just get like tap water really hot, or as hot as you can. Um, having the warm water just helps the Epsom salts dissolve a little bit easier. And you'll have um, some dish soap. You'll need just a couple drops of that, and you'll need a spoon for mixing. And you'll need a cloth and a magnifying glass. And then you'll need some sort of mirror or glass. Um, I've seen people do this experiment on windows. If you have access to windows where you are, um, you could use the little handheld mirrors like you get from a beauty salon. Um, maybe each of the students could have their own mirror and, and see the crystals forming and observe with the magnifying glass. Um, for mine, I just took a picture frame because I had the glass in it and I just put some black paper um, on the back of it so I could hopefully see the crystals um, a little bit better. So that's what I just used. I used um, the glass from a picture frame. So um, you, when you get started, you can ask the students, you know, what do they know about crystals? Have they ever seen crystals? Um, and what have they observed about them? What were their shapes? What were their colors? Um, and do they know how crystals are made? And that's what we're going to talk about in the experiment today. So you're going to take, probably uh, this will be a tutor demonstration, just mixing up the solution. But um, if you want the students to each have their own mirror um, or glass or use a window, you can, you can do that, whatever works best for your campus. But you'll have your warm water and you'll pour in your Epsom salts and you're going to stir it around and dissolve it. So um, I just did this experiment, so I have my Epsom salts already in here. Um, it takes a few minutes to dissolve them, and it will still be fairly cloudy. Um, you're making a super saturated solution, so that means there's, there's a lot of minerals that Epsom salt to the water. So the water is going to dissolve as much of it as it can, but there still might be a little bit left over. Um, but that'll be really good for making our crystals. So once you stir that around and have it dissolve, then you're going to pour a couple of drops of the dish soap in there. And I've heard that just helps it stick to the mirror or the glass a little bit better and makes cleanup pretty easy too. So when you have that all stirred around, you're going to take your cloth and just dip it in your solution. And not sopping wet because then it might take a little longer to dry but about that wet and then you're going to take your glass and you're going to rub it on the mirror or on the glass and get it all wet. So I just finished this one to show you, but so I won't get it wet, but you just rub it on there and we're going to let it dry. And the, the CC science video, they suggested you could bring a hair dryer to help speed up the drying process. And that's actually what I used. I just used um, it on cool temperature and that helped the water evaporate faster. So while those are drying, you can go back to discussion about uh, crystals and how they're made. So I love this, these science scripts from CC Connected. Um, the user, Nicole Liam, she has these scripts for every week uh, for the science experiments and she has these really cool graphics um, to go along with them. But she, there's good questions about, um, you know, talking about the layers of the geosphere. And where do we usually find crystals and they're usually in the crust. So we have core, mantle, and crust. So that's where most of our crystals are. Um, but they're kind of deep down into the crust. So you have to usually mine for them because um, they're heavier. We talked about how the heavier rocks and minerals kind of sink to the bottom layers of the crust when we talked about um, those layers a, a few experiments ago. Um, I'm going to talk about what do crystals look like and are they like random shapes or are they kind of geometric shapes and you'll notice that crystals make geometric shapes 
So they, the, the atoms themselves, they actually align in these beautiful geometric patterns and shapes. And you can find a graphic to show of the different um, types of crystals and their shapes. And so it's just amazing to see how God can, how God created these minerals to arrange themselves this way in these beautiful crystals. Um, so Nicole mentions that, you know, a lot of crystals, they start in a liquid form. So like our solution here, it, the mineral is dissolved in a liquid. And then when that liquid evaporates, like our water is evaporating, the, the mineral atoms, they arrange themselves in these beautiful patterns. And sometimes they're arranged in, in like something we call a crystal lattice. And that's something you can observe sometimes with a, a, a magnifying glass or a microscope. Um, you can ask them if they've ever seen a picture of what a snowflake looks like and how that is arranged in these beautiful patterns. Um, you can show them, uh, here she has some pictures of just different shapes of snowflakes. And this is a really awesome picture. These are the mineral, the crystal caves in Mexico, and these are miners. So look how huge these crystals are. Can you imagine going into a cave and seeing these crystals like that? They come in so many beautiful colors and shapes. So one way that crystals form is they start in liquid form. And then when that liquid evaporates, the atoms um, arrange themselves in these beautiful patterns, these geometric shapes. And another way that crystals can form is from, from magma and when magma cools. So we learned last week that magma kind of sits between the crust and the mantle and it's this liquid molten rock. And when there's a crack in, in the crust that, that the pressure um, pushes up that magma and it, it comes up to the surface or it gets closer to the surface. And as it gets closer to the surface, it starts to cool. And if it cools slowly enough, you'll notice that there are crystals that form. So um, scientists who study or look for um, crystals, they're called geologists or gemologists, and they dig, they have to mine into the earth to find them. And we use them for all kinds of things like jewelry and um, decorating. We use them for cooking. We use um, minerals like quartz in our watches and our electronics. So we use them for all kinds of things and they're very beautiful. Um, so I want to show you how mine turn out and hopefully you can see it on the video. But you can see that the water has evaporated and we have some crystals that formed. So you can have them take their magnifying glasses and observe what they notice about the crystals that are left behind. If they see any patterns or structures in them, it's really very interesting. So that is what I have for you for CC Cycle 1, Week 19 Hands-On Science Experiment. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.